Hi everybody, it's Miss Coker and I'm here to show you the new app called Blooms. This is something you can use in your classroom and it really is a great tool to have. It is free, let me emphasize that. Basically, it's a good communication tool for behavior as well as conferencing and just general information between you and the parents in your classroom or even between you and your administrators. So this is the welcome page to get you to join and all you do is go to join Blooms once you're in and you'll notice it's just blooms with a z.net. Once you're there, just say, you know, your teacher definitely, and then go through the process. Simple questions, and again, it's free. You're not going to be asked for any billing information. So anyhow, once you get that done, I recommend you load it to the bottom of your page because that way it'll be easy access for you to pull it up in the future. So we're going to look at a demo class that I have right here. And basically, I'm just going to walk you through some of the basics of this. Um, to get you a little bit more familiar with it. So if you choose to sign up, this is what you would see. Basically, my name is appearing right here because it's how I wanted it to look. You get the choice. You can put just your last name if you want. I don't mind using my first name, but again, that's your preference. You also get to choose either an avatar or you can upload your own photo. I like using photos that show part of my face for some reason, but I always like to show off my dogs because my students think that's really cool. Afterward, you're going to notice down here that this is my McDonald Elementary group. You are obviously allowed to have more than one group, especially if you're the type of teacher that goes to different schools for maybe ESOL, or if you're a speech pathologist or an OT or somebody that's using this app and you travel a lot, this is a good way to organize your information as far as who you're communicating with and where. Down here, this is again if you have more than one class. So here's my first grade explorers is what I call this. And then we're looking at the demo class, and the reason we're doing that is really just for confidentiality reasons. So you are not going to see any of my actual students or parents. All of the images are just loaded from the website. I actually don't know where they get them from. So anyway, we are in our demo class, but if you were a middle or high school teacher, or if you were even just a special area teacher, this would be a good place to organize all the different classes that you teach. And they are color-coded, but as you can see, I have two, so it's not that hard to keep track of. Further down the page is your invite button. This is one way that you can invite your parents and teachers. It will require you to actually have their email addresses handy, but I just wanted to show you your option. Down here is if you wanted to create a class or group, which is what we have right here. So when I created mine, I hit that plus sign. And you just go through the motions. It's nothing hard. Down here is your settings. That's if you have certain things you want to see or maybe removed. It also lets you set up certain times of day, which I find very important for parents to be able to communicate with you. So you're allowed to set what they call silent hours. So even if a parent messages you, it will not come through until the next day when your time starts. So that is something nice. So that way you're not hearing a ding in the middle of the night because a parent has a random question at midnight. And then obviously you have your support button. Um, the team is amazing at Blooms and they're very, very nice to help you with any questions you may have. But for me, I know that I just like to explore and figure things out. So now we're moving to the top of the page and you're going to see there's a number 11. That means there's 11 different things in my newsfeed. This little page of paper with little, I guess that's a picture box, is your feed. And you'll notice that there's a slight highlight under it, and that's just to let you know which section you're under. So we're under our feed. This is our welcome page. You're allowed to create your own photo, or you can upload photos, and you can put them here. So this is what parents will see when they log in. You also get your avatar, so you can pick a class avatar or, again, something from your own photo. And you can even see here, because you are the administrator for this page, you can change things as much as you want. If you scroll down, you're going to notice that we have a fake, our fake demo class, parents and teacher. Basically, this is where you would be able to leave messages. And to leave a message, you basically hit create, tell them who you're sending it to, and write whatever you want. And we'll show you there are several options. You have a basic post, which is updates and photos. You can also upload little videos of things you may have done in class as long as you have you know, all those permissions signed by parents from the beginning of the year. Basic announcements, alerts, this would be handy, especially if for some reason you're in a lockdown situation or if, you know, school's canceled suddenly. Um, you can create portfolio items with your class so parents can see student work. 
Your behavior is here. I love this one. This has been helpful so I can show parents how the behavior of kids is going. I don't use attendance, but you know, somebody in a different district might find that very handy. Um, events. So if you know your calendar for the year, you can enter all of this in here and then parents will be up to date as to what's happening each month. If you want to organize helpers or, you know, what they call those parent um, volunteers in the room or um, classroom moms or something, you can have them sign up here and it makes it much easier for you. It's just less of a paper trail. Here's a fantastic one. Parent teacher conference. Instead of sending all of those reminders and sign-up sheets home, your parents can simply use their phone, pick a time and day, and it will remind them. And that way you don't have to keep track of who, who has dibs, who, who signed up for one spot first. And then down here is another option if you want to invite other people to your group. So that's the create option. As we move down here, you're just going to see some information. This is where you might see, like it says, welcome Hannah and David. Every time a parent joins, this is going to show up with their image or whatever they chose for it, so you know exactly who's on with you. And then down here, again, it just says different things of, you know, where how the parents are going to see messages and types of things. And just like a Facebook post, honestly, people can like it, comment, and view it. As the teacher, you are allowed to limit comments or um, not have them at all, which is kind of nice if you know that it might stir up some trouble. So that is your basic toolbar up there for feed. Behavior is another fantastic one. Now you're not going to see much right now, but basically you would select the group that you want to do behavior on. You can add them individually and it creates little avatars for the kids and you can do positive or negative points depending on what kind of school you have. If you have a PBIS school, you would just stick with the positive points. Um, and this is obviously something that you can work with with your district to see what they would prefer. And then the kids' little avatars are going to hatch and turn into things the more they get. So I would show you more on this section, but because again, I don't want any student confidentiality broached, um, we're going to move on from there. Portfolio. And again, every time you click on something, it will tell you what you get to do in here. So that's really neat. So track your student behavior and access your student portfolios here. You can take their work and upload it so you have a working file of the things they did. So that's actually really neat. Signups, you can see where parents have signed up for conferences. This is all fake again. Field trips, you know, all these different things. So that's something that I really like because, again, I'm thinking more for conferences, but everybody has something different. And then you can do reports. It says you have to upgrade for some of these, but you can get a basic report of who's using it. We're going to move to the calendar, and this is also another feature that we talked about earlier. As long as you have your school calendar handy, you can go ahead and enter dates for people to remember. And it would be just like a message except you're creating your event. So it might take a little time in the beginning of the year just to get this set up the way you want it to, or you can update it each month, whatever's easiest. And you can scroll through and set everything up as you want. Next, we have the albums. And I enjoy, <laughs> these are fun, the, um, adding photos up here when I can. And I find it easiest to do this if I'm using my phone. So if I take pictures with my phone in class and I have the app loaded on my phone, I can simply just load it from there without having to download things back to a PC. But everybody can do this however they want and you can sort it into albums. So in years to come, you can keep some of your photos. You can also show them again to other classes if it becomes relevant. Down here or up here, we have members. This is where you would be able to see everybody that did sign up. So you can start, you know, your process of elimination to see who forgot to sign up. And anyway, and you can also add members manually this way. And then we basically have our settings, and that's where I'm able to manage the members, edit their settings, and everything else that you see here. So we're going to cancel that option now. Over here you see a bell, and that is your announcements. So if you have something from Blooms and they want you to know, this is where you would hit the um, notification button. And if I had a message from a parent, I would see that this little message bar would have a number as well. Again, to create messages to parents, you would just click your message button. And I'm not going to do that right now because, again, I don't want the parents' names to show up. 
but everything that you communicate between people will be in this chat bar section. And you can always scroll back through, and it actually is great data to proof that you've had communication with parents, especially if you're going to sit or an IEP meeting. So I know that was a quick run through of Blooms, but I hope you are going to consider giving it a try, especially since it's free. Parents have had great success with this. It has cleared up a lot of misunderstandings with my parents so far, and I really do hope that you will give it a try. Thanks for listening.